Last week we got into stacking with Cyril using scripts. This week, let's take a look at how to stack with Cyril without scripts. Using Cyril is pretty straightforward, and this won't take long. And while a lot of people say they find stacking without scripts to be somewhat daunting, it's straightforward once you learn it, and the detailed control yields the best results. You're going to start by going to the home icon, top left, go into the select folder window, and navigate to the folder of astrophoto images that you want to process. Click on the folder and select open. Cyril only works with FITS files, which are common in astrophotography. So if you did not record with FITS files, you can convert them in the conversion tab. The conversion tab is the leftmost tab in the control panel on the right. Now navigate to the plus button in the control panel, an explorer window will pop up. Select all the relevant files and click add. The files will be added into the control panel, ready for manipulation. Now choose a name for your converted files, or you can leave it the same if you want. And you can even convert to a FIT sequence or an SER sequence if you prefer. For our purposes here, we're just going to convert to FITS images. Once ready, hit the Convert button. Unless you're using a much older computer, Cyril will convert the files very quickly. We're going to blaze through 386 TIFF images here in seconds. Next up is the Sequence tab in the Control Panel, just to the right of the Conversion tab. But we don't have much use for it here. That's mainly for manipulating large sets of images that will turn into something like a dark master. In this example, we won't be using calibration frames such as darks, biases, or flats at all. We're just going to keep it really simple. Beside the sequence tab is the calibration tab. As I noted earlier, we're not going to use calibration frames this time. If you don't already know, calibration frames are your dark biases, flats, and potentially dark flat frames. They are used to remove any imperfections in your lenses or camera. Next, we need to go to the Registration tab. Here is where Cyril will align your images. In the Control Panel, you'll see the Sequence Stacking options. The first thing to choose is your method. There are five options. We won't go through them all here, but if you hold your cursor over the five options for a moment, a dynamic description will pop up that will show you the pros and cons of each option. Cyril's full of these dynamic menus. They make it very user-friendly. They are well worth stopping and taking a moment to read in order for you to understand what the various options do. And if you're unsure, experiment. Try stacking one way and then another, or aligning one way and then another, and you'll learn a lot about how it works. For our purposes here, we're going to go with two-pass global alignment. It uses multiple stars to give a very accurate alignment. And it also allows us to choose which frame we want to use as our frame of reference for stacking. Personally, I find this to be the most useful option and use it pretty much as my default. Having picked two star alignment, we're going to pop back over to the sequence tab and pick open frame list. And from there, we're going to choose which frame is best or at least seems best to use as the reference frame. This video is only for demonstration purposes, so I'm not going to put too much effort into this. I think frame 17 looks pretty good. There's a little bit more contrast detail there, probably just due to momentary favorable atmospheric conditions. But whatever, that frame is good enough for here. For registration channel, well, we're working with a monochrome image, so our only option here is luminance. If you were working with color, you could pick one of the color channels as well. For the transformation channel, you have four options. The default is homography, with eight degrees of freedom. Moving up, you have a fine or a fien, similarity, and shift at the very top. Each one of those removes two degrees of freedom, and each has less and less tolerance for error. We're going to go with the shift option, which is ideal for images with no scaling, distortion, or field rotation, none of which are in our set of images. But if the images that you wish to stack have less precise mapping, you might want to use homography or one of the other options below shift. In the image selection section, you can choose to use all the images in your stack, or you can navigate back to the Sequence tab and go to the Open Frame list again and remove any images you consider entirely unsuitable. Once you've made your selection, go ahead and hit Go Register. Cyril will now begin the process of aligning all the images in your stack. This could take only a few moments or a few minutes. It depends on how many you have. In our case, it'll take a minute or two, so we'll just go ahead and jump ahead. When it's done, you can go ahead and jump to the plotting if you're curious and see if there are any particular images you may want to remove from the sequence before you begin stacking. I see a few rough ones in mind, but none I'm going to bother with for the purposes of this informational session. Now at last, the stacking. Under the stacking tab, the first option is to pick your method. You could go with the sum method, many persons do, and it works okay, but that's not quite the same thing as saying it works well. 
What we want to use here is average with rejection, which performs several types of clipping that will work as error correction and do a heck of a lot to clean up the noise in this low information set of images. After you've picked your method, you have to choose your normalization. You have additive, multiplicative, and additive and multiplicative with scaling. The scaling versions give us a better signal to noise ratio, so we're going to go with additive with scaling. We generally always want to choose to increase the signal to noise ratio. From there, you'll have to pick your preferred pixel rejection technique. Once again, the dynamic menus give you an idea of which you should use. As we are working with several hundred images, we'll use the generalized extreme student deviate test. And last, we have to pick our weighing method. As always, the dynamic menu should give you a good idea which option will work best for you. I'll pick noise since I want to minimize the noise in this low information image. And that's it. Now we can stack. Here's where the magic happens. And that hard one sequence of dozens, maybe hundreds, perhaps even thousands of images transforms into an astrophotograph. This is going to take a few minutes, so we'll go ahead and skip ahead and take a look at the final result. So our stack is just now coming to completion. When it completes, we'll go to the open button top left, click it, and find the appropriate file. You'll know it because it'll bear the suffix underscore stacked dot fit. Now deep sky objects are dim, so you'll still have to develop the image to properly see it. But at the bottom center right of zero, we can go to the display mode options and pick auto stretch, which gives us a quick rough idea of what our finished image can look like. There we go. We just saw that dim little hazy spot in the sky turn into a galaxy. Now I'm going to crop out the imperfections along the ridge and do a really quick edit on this to show you that with Cyril, with some basic stacking technique, even without calibration frames, and even without a heck of a lot of captured information, you can get some very beautiful final results. So we're just going to pop up to the histogram transformation option and do a quick auto stretch. This will give us a good sense of what the light of our galaxy should look like. It's pretty close, I think, to the maximum that we want the light. Now we're going to play with the black level a bit via the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation option and then adjust the black level just a little bit more via the ASIN or assign option. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. I started to run a noise removal routine, but quickly removed it. The routine mistook some of the beautiful contrast and detail within the galaxy for noise. So instead, I'm just going to fine tune my black level just a little bit. Then we'll apply just a few more quick touch-ups. And it's starting to look about like we want it to look. Stacked and developed in Cyril in just about 15 minutes. So next time you're stacking, you could use scripts if you want. The scripts are fast and convenient. But if you really want to maximize the power of Cyril, Cyril is an incredibly powerful tool. Learn how to stack manually. It's not that hard. And for the detail and control that it gives you, with a little practice, you can really get some incredible results. Thank you for watching. And if you appreciate these tutorials and the educational materials on astronomy via the Sky Story channel, don't forget to hit that like button and please take a moment to subscribe.